Good morning, today is July 11th, 2021. I wanted to do a very brief overview of the back border garden. It is really coming into its stride now and I have some new additions. I had to scrape basically almost everything out of the back side here, um, this left side, because the motherwort took over. Um, the motherwort is this purple back here. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get another shot of it, but it's extremely invasive and horrible to deal with. Um, I've been digging it up for years now and unfortunately it spreads like the roots look like a bowl of spaghetti and they just go everywhere and it's just a challenge but on to brighter more positive moments in the garden these are my absolute favorite i'm not 100 percent sure if they are gloriosa daisies or not um gloriosa daisy rudbeckia but this one looks like it's pretty standard but these have the more like dispersed darker rim around the center and they read more orange than anything and I, I can't explain what they I mean they have they have and like a glow to them they have this it feels like it feels like part of the sun was captured and, and placed down into the garden. And it's just, I really can't explain it. I'm not a poet. I wish I were, but for now, you just, if you can get your hands on some of these, they're such a gift to have. So I just, I can't get over it, but we're going to move on. So that's your Gloriosa Rubecchia. To the right here is the standard Black Eye Susan variety. These are gorgeous too. Look at those. I wish I could eat that. That looks so good. Like a little Hershey kiss. Then there's the sunflowers coming up. Tons of verbena. Benariensis. Three off the back here. Lavender hyssop. This is, er, anise hyssop. This is the one that smells and tastes like licorice. You can make tea from that. This was my penstemon, but it's called it quits already. So I don't know. Oh, is that new? Hmm. Is that new bud? Not sure if that's new. I don't think that's new. I'm gonna have to examine that a bit better later, but I'm not sure if I should cut that down or not. Everything I've ever read said penstemon's supposed to grow all or bloom all summer, but I've never had that happen. So down here we have verbena imagination, I think, and then some salvia, some blue salvia. It's not quite there yet. Then this gorgeous, gorgeous lantana. I forget what this one's called. Um like ble mm, something heart I think bleeding heart or something not like the I don't know it's something heart I'll see if I can find the tag and this is super exciting this is Hel uh, Helenium sneezeweed I absolutely adore these and I wanted them for so long and I haven't been able to get them um, the last few years I looked for seeds at the end of last year to try to have them in the garden for this year and couldn't work it out and then yesterday I stumbled upon these at one of the local uh, farm stands and nearly lost my mind because look at how beautiful these are look at the variety all shades of yellow coral orange red brick brown and the green it's just one of the most beautiful and just like how fun they are look they look like like little hearts like these frilly little petals they're super celebratory and this color scheme with the purple nearby i'm just this here's the salvia it's not well you gotta ha you're, ha you're gonna have to check back in a couple weeks so by then these should be another foot tall i hope and um yeah, you'll really get the, the contrast with the lavender. See the lavender here? This is also a new addition. And I have the agastache, agastache, agastache. I've heard it pronounced so many different ways. And um, this might need a little haircut. Trim that up. So a lot of this stuff is brand new. Um, like I said, the motherwort, or I'm sorry, the spiderwort took over. And I had to just basically start from scratch again and a lot of this stuff is having some transplant shock not not crazy or anything but 
it's it's feeling it so again in a few weeks um this agastache or this helenium i think it says goes to even four feet tall so i will be here for that and here's some like look at the the purple with it i just can't get enough of that so moving on some more rudbeckia and that was a volunteer that i was able to save where this verbena finally starting to settle in. This took a while to adjust. It's, um, this is a Summerina Rudbeckia that's supposed to be two-tone color as well. And it was destroyed by bunnies the second I planted it. So I'm excited to see some blooms on it, but it lost, I don't know, half of its size uh, within the last few weeks. So. Again, give it a couple weeks and it should be looking a lot better and nice and full. Again, it's going to be, I think, like a yellowy-orange combination. Um, hopefully similar to the ones that we started out with in the video and um, similar to the Gloriosa. And again, that with the lavender contrasting it, oh, it's going to be so good. Or I said contrast, but I meant complimenting. Um, red hot poker over there. I was hoping it would be red hot in color, but it's actually like white almost. So um, I've had two blooms from there so far. I don't know if they're all going to come up that color. I'm still hoping there might be a surprise, different variety that enters the picture, but or a different color. But I'm I don't know if that's how that works. So here are definitely the Gloriosa daisies. Rebecca, look at look at the perfection. I just I've discovered over the last few years that um, I really really enjoy multicolor flowers. So anything with two or three colors even is just you can I mean like these are great examples. So you have the Montana all different colors like these sherberts pink peach reds um and this is going to fill out a lot more too and it does i think it it does it's i would say its primary color is in the this redder family but um yeah again this needs about a foot more growth a good foot so it's tight back here everything's really packed in here tight but look at how gorgeous oh. Is that not something from a fairy tale? Um, I just, I, I'm probably not going to shut up over these. I'm so, I just, if you follow me on Instagram and on here and maybe on TikTok eventually, this will be like the Hellenium show, I think. Anyway, let me squeeze back over here. So yeah, like the multicolors, look at this gorgeous daylily. I wish I remembered the, t the name. I've had these for a few years and last year or this season, they they really just went nuts, doubled in size. So these are stunning. Not quite the pairing I'd, you know, plan on. These came up, I think they, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with these because I, I at the end of the season last year, put a few packs of Rudbeckia seeds in the ground. Um, like very late in the season just trying to see if I could get a few more blooms in so I don't I don't know I don't know sometimes you don't have answers when you're gardening sometimes stuff just happens and you just kind of I don't know you go with it so I have the giant hyssop over here and over here and it's very much so giant if you can see all that this is the um, cut leaf cone flower this is loaded with buds as you might be able to tell. And that should be in full bloom, like any day now. And then the Leatris and these gorgeous, gorgeous, even the beetle eaten ones. These gorgeous, bleeding hearts, Heliopsis. Little cross section, look at that color combo so the lighting is I'm losing the lighting I want but um 
you get the idea down here these are also two new additions this is wendy's wish salvia uh, i had these growing on the deck in containers and they just weren't getting enough light so these are going to have a absolutely stunning really tall bushy um, spread that has those sort of like conical type flowers that the bees and hummingbirds love so that'll fill out nicely some wild sea or russian sage in the back another lantana there that's adjusting to its new home i did have it over here and this is a lot more shade than it was last year so i had to pull it out um some new edition cleome purple cleome that should hopefully grow another few feet and be a nice pop of purple back here and then some sort of traditional shade garden um begonias that i think are so underrated um but these just all went in too so they were also just not getting the water and everything that they needed so they're looking a little rough now but they will definitely cheer back up and in pennsylvania here on the east coast this garden doesn't take off until i mean now it's 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 pretty hype now but wait until august september even october it's just really that's that's really the peak time like september so just a quick quick shot of that and you know what let me just pop over here really quickly just because i'm super excited it's not the back perennial border garden but it is a side border garden and i just added five new perennials three of the pink flocks pinkish lilac flocks and then two of these absolutely stunning i think they're maximus rudbeckias now they don't have any blooms now but they should, hopefully. They were really root bound when I picked them up. I just got them yesterday. So you can see there's one bud over there. And then these gorgeous leaves, they remind me of the ocean. I just, anything that's like water is, makes me a very happy girl. So this should fill out gorgeous, gorgeously. And is that a word, gorgeously? I had my zinnias here last year and it was like the happiest place in the world for me. But this year they just struggled so much and they kept getting eaten eaten and i have a few up in the front here with the melon or with the pumpkins but yeah i'm trying to make it a little easier on myself and just go with what the ground wants go with the soil that the conditions that i have look how gorgeous and then of course all the sunflowers coming up in the back so anyway that's it for now happy healthy gardening